Hi, I'm Matt Dietrich of Reboot Illinois, and welcome to another edition of Spin Cycle, where we try to unravel some of the spin of the 2014 election campaign. And uh, this week, my colleague Madeline Dubeck attended a candidate forum for the Republican gubernatorial candidates. Um, it was out in the suburbs, and it was one of the few times that the four Republicans have gotten together. And um, we're starting to learn a little bit about the candidates on one crucial subject, it sounds like. Taxes uh, came up, and it was interesting to, to note that three out of the four uh, candidates for governor all were open to the notion of adding taxes onto services that are currently not subjected to a sales tax in Illinois. So, you know, things like haircuts or uh, landscapers or, you know, it, it just about anything you can think of that right. doesn't have a sales tax right now. If you get your car worked on, you pay taxes on the parts, but you don't pay any sales on tax service, on the service. On the labor, right. So that was a question that came up, and um, Dan Rutherford was the only candidate to adamantly say um, he doesn't want to open that door because he fears it would lead to more and more and more, and uh, nobody really embraced it. Well, Bill Brady came close to embracing it, he, but he believes that if you were to uh, add a tax to more of those kinds of services, then you might at some point be able to actually lower the tax rate. Mm -hmm. There's no question that we need to broaden the base and lower the rate. But we've got a combination, reduce our overall spending and reduce the overall tax burden on our economy, but come up with the mix of tax rates and tax uh, bases that provides us the most pro-growth opportunity. For example, the only I think, I think the only solution to our when government starts to be able to tax something new, they're going to look for the next thing new after that. I do not support taxing services no it's going to look at everything, but if you can reduce, we have very high sales tax. So that's a yes on, on broadening the base Maybe. of the sales tax? Maybe. Okay, but what about the income tax? Isn't this the group that wants that income tax to fall from 5 to 3.75? Well, you would think that that would be the case, but um, it seems that they're not all willing to adamantly say that as well. Bill would a top-to-bottom overhaul of our tax structure in Illinois, because revenue may need to be on the table. But I will tell you, as the governor, I will not sign any, any revenue into law that is not a part of a comprehensive, verifiable, long-term solution to the finances of our state. We've got to bite the bullet, take the tough decisions that are right for the long term in Illinois, and that means moving. Okay. So the door is left open there, and we have, you know, essentially in one form or another, um, every Republican candidate for governor saying they might need some more revenue, they might need to... Uh, have some higher taxes or new taxes. Uh, now, one final thing on the tax, there's one other candidate in this race, Governor Pat Quinn. Well, who has two actually. He, he has nominal, uh, oh, a nominal Tim? primary opponent in T.O. Hardiman. Correct. Uh, but Pat Quinn succeeded this week in pushing back his budget address to the General Assembly and all of us in Illinois um, from the middle of February until March 26th which is a good week after the primary of March 18th, and he managed to avoid in the State of the State speech talking about what he wants to do about the temporary income tax. So what's the advantage to Governor Quinn of giving his budget address on March 26th, the week after the primary, as opposed to uh, February 19th? Well, he um, gets to take the next six or seven weeks, the rest of the primary campaign season for the Republican candidates for governor and avoid giving them the opportunity to take a whack at him um, verbally on the whole issue of increasing taxes. And as we know, Bruce Rauner is on TV pretty much nonstop these days and uh, very frequently says that Pat Quinn is the worst governor in the nation and uh, that he should be subjected to term limits that he failed on when it, he tried to pass term limits, et cetera, et cetera. So Pat Quinn gets to avoid giving him more fodder for those TV ads. Right, and then and, I, and then when he gives his budget address, he's going to know who his opponent's opponent going to be is, in November. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's where we're at for this week, and we'll be somewhere probably totally different next week on a different <laughs> issue. But uh, that's the best we can do for unraveling the spin, and thanks for joining us again on the Spin Cycle. We'll see you next week.